When I told my mom I was going to Sweden for a master degree in storytelling, well, she didn't actually believe it could be something I could do for a living, but you know, she was kind enough to sell her cranky old Japanese car for my expenses anyway. Hi, my name is Saran Yemenya, and it's scary up here. <laughs> well, now I can proudly tell my mom how successful of a storyteller I am standing here in front of you guys. So big thanks to TEDx. And big thanks to you. You've just made my mom really proud, so that's very cheap. <laughs> anyway, why Sweden? Many people would ask. Well, it's free, and to be completely honest, and it's, well, that was only what my mom's old car could only afford. But, you know, that being said, in storytelling class, I got the chance to try basically everything from graphic design to illustration to short story writing or even acting. It is a weird master degree, I know, but if I have to explain to you or to my mom what exactly is storytelling and why is it a proper education for me, I can sum it up in just one sentence. Show, don't tell. Showing is a much better way to tell a story than just, you know, telling it. You need visual strategies, and this is when a designer slash visual storyteller like me comes in. But what to tell then? Back in my high school days, I would walk from my mom's office in Asok to Nanabi's TS station, and on the way, I would come across street hawkers selling souvenirs to tourists. I'm sure you can remember all those tacky cultural products like Thai-style wooden dolls or you know, carved elephants, but what I found most striking was this neon color painted umbrellas or pitch black fans with pictures of upcountry sceneries. Um, Anyway, I can't really explain why I'm attracted to this tacky neon art. I just thought it's really cool. I think it could be the fact that most people think of them as, you know, lame, low-class art, and therefore find it super challenging to prove them wrong. And that was probably my first and formal itch to investigate the idea of low versus high. So I decided to tell the story by creating two short animations in which all the backgrounds and characters were hand cut from neon colored paper. I set up the lighting and I moved them piece by piece with my own hands. The first story earned me the finalist animation awards from Adobe, so I was very ambitious with my second story. Well, this second animation told the stories of two labor class characters who didn't have many choices in life. One was dirt poor, the girl was dirt poor and had to work in a farm, and the boy was, you know, born in a slum. I don't think it's fair to say that poor people make poor judgment. It seems like my view of this subject, you know, low or high, rich or poor, does not only limit in art. <sighs> I guess what I was trying to say with that animation was not to judge whether it's art or how people live their life. Okay, actually, the animations were the stories of my mom and dad when they were young. You know, that same person who sold their car for my master. There's something about the way we see and define lameness in Thai culture always leaves me pondering. Why is something regarded as high or low, rich or poor? Simply because I was born and bred in Nong Tabri, you know, the outskirts of Bangkok. Although I keep telling myself, Nong Tabri is the new Brooklyn. <laughs> Deep down, I know it's not true. <laughs> but speaking of which, I find it quite similar to living in Chiang Mai, how you have to wait for that red minibus, which is the only way to commute, and it's kind of annoying. But as much as I hate waiting for that bus, you know, getting to see all the grocery stores and food stalls and street market along the way was always a pleasure for me. So it is a love-hate relationship after all, but I would have never thought that my suburban upbringing would later identify everything I do, and I mean everything. When I was studying in Sweden, there was a lot of crazy things happening here in Thailand. 
we actually made headlines in Swedish newspaper a few times. And there was this one time my Swedish friend came up to me with a newspaper and asked me to explain what was going on. But you can guess, it was this red shirt and yellow shirt conflicts. <laughs> oh, good feedback, I like it. <laughs> um, anyway, I could hardly explain the situation in Thai, let alone in English. So, so I did what any brilliant Thai student would do. I consulted Siri on my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> And even Suvi were being slightly diplomatic, you know, but um, anyway, I let my Swedish friend do all the talking and make his own conclusion. Honestly, I couldn't remember what he said, but one of the words he mentioned grabbed my attention, and that word was social class. Suddenly, all those grocery stores and food stalls and street market came back to me. Like, which class did I belong to then? My family is not wealthy, yes, but we're not dirt poor either. And I'm such a snob, like a spoiled brat, to be precise. So that word lingered. So after a political discussion with a Swedish friend and Siri, I was very frustrated. I, at the same time, very inspired. I flew back to Non Tabri to find a way to tell these particular stories in my very own way. First thing I did was I went to a grocery store near my house, and I bought a lot of cheap plastic baskets, and I took all of them to the carpenter and I told him, you know, make this a share. Make me a lot of share. It's supposed to be a mockery of luxury and the work is called Sheep Ass Elites. I basically attached this luxurious Victorian chair legs to, you know, cheap plastic basket you can find at any fresh market. And this is to actually tell the story about class conflict and coexistence. I wanted to put out a question if something that are so different from each other can actually collide in harmony or not. It turned out that the project was well received. You know, I got many inquiries from several international press. I remember, well, first email I got was from Vogue Casa, and I was like, a plastic basket from Non Tabri is gonna be on Vogue? Like, I've, I've made it, you know, <laughs> for, for a 25 year old fresh out of grad school. That was the first huge step. So I packed all my basket back to Thailand to start a design studio called 56 Studio with my best friend. And together we were so determined that our point of view, our stories would, you know, would make a difference. My design studio was meant to give voice to our stories. Things we thought weren't getting enough attention, but instead of putting them in words, we create objects and you know, artifacts instead. But one thing we agree upon though is that we are proud of the way we see good and bad you know, good in the bad, and sometimes the bad in the good. For example, when my favorite artist, Ai Weiwei, was arrested by Chinese authority, I, I wanted to voice my opinion to tyrannism and establishments as a whole by questioning what is moral and what is not. So um, I bought this cheap PVC pipes, once again from that same grocery store, and I turned them into shares. By this collection called Pipe Dynasty, I, I wanted to pose a question about how we see good and bad, you know, worthy and worthless, not just to Chinese society, but in every society we live in. I like to slap people in the face, you know, speaking metaphorically, of course, but <laughs> what I truly believe is that if you're not aware of the fact that not everything, maybe not everything is entirely good or entirely bad, you'll judge and you'll miss out the chance to see the world from a whole new perspective. I love soap operas, especially Thai soap operas, which haven't changed much, if you ask me. But I think it's the same principle that I like to slap the intellectuals in their face, that you know something regarded as corny and lame could actually be very cool. So I also took inspiration from trashy pop culture and you know, lame social gossip as well. For example, there was this one work that I wanted to make a caricature of pop culture. So I picked these iconic somewhat cheesy Hollywood characters and I turned them into minimal illustrated furniture, if that, if that makes sense. And this is Lady Gaga, by the way. <laughs> this is Harry Potter and Hedwig. <laughs> anyway, it, it became an instant viral and earned now place in further global spotlights. You know, Fox actually emailed us twice. One email was a bad news. Another one was good. It ended up being very good, but anyway, you don't want to know the details, but let's just say I got away with being sued for making fun of The Simpsons. <laughs> but I was glad that our stories, our parody went across the continents. 
So three years went by after we founded our studio. I have to say we've done well, you know. I've received honors from several press as designer of the years. We've been invited to exhibit our collections in many countries representing young Thai designers. And we've just recently started um, our design gallery to promote underdog artists from all over the world as well. I'm currently 31 and everything in my life remains unpredictable. Some days I feel like I can do anything, you know, like most of the time just an alcoholic loser. But, <laughs> but what gets me up in the morning though? What makes it worth squeezing myself on the BTS every day? It's that itch, that same itch when I walk past the tourist art, that neon art in Soinana. That same itch when I talk to Suri on my iPhone. That same itch when people stereotype this lower middle class boy from Nontabri. I think I can challenge people or society to look at things differently, to look at people differently, to look at art differently. I wanna make people question their values and I got the greatest pleasure slapping people in the face with cheap PVC pipes, plastic baskets and soap operas. I've never tried to save the world really, but I honestly truly believe that we would have a better society, a better understanding of each other if we don't quickly judge. Low or high, rich or poor, white or slightly soy cowboy tan, or non tabri Bangkok, red or yellow. Just don't quickly judge. I mean, people judge, but just don't quickly judge. I can definitely say that I am proud of that super grocery stores in non tabri I am proud of the fact that my mom once worked in a farm and my dad was born in a slum. Most definitely, I am proud of that old cranky Japanese car because it drove me here. Meet everyone at TEDx today, so thank you. <laughs>